Start off here, he won the die roll. I mentioned that could be important. Of course it's important. It's a Delver deck. It means you can daze things. Yes. Turn one, underground C. Ooh. And he's got a daze. And he has his main deck forked bolt. All right. Hey, these are the things I want to see to win this match. Yes. And death right. And death right. Okay. Liking all of this. Go back. I'm going back over to Kieran. Draws scavenging ooze for the turn. Wooded foothills? Question mark. He's gonna go for heritage druid. So Ryan, do you just daze right away? This is there's some temptation to not daze this because forked bolt is real nice against it. Okay. I like the daze. All right. The, the issue is you don't want to end up in a situation where too much has happened before you can leverage your fork bolt and just elf, elf, tap my elf, start doing too many things in one turn. That's, that's a real problem. Then you're going to look at the daze in hand and you're like, I'm, I'm terrible. Yeah, this is not ideal. Tan going to make mana off Death Right Shaman. Young Pyromancer up here and replays the land, says go. Nicely done. The follow up being the two mana threat here. Getting that days out makes some sense. Not really set back by picking up that land at all. Here I'm fetching up another basic forest. Paying a lot of respect to Wasteland here. Yeah. The deck does not play much in the way of non-green spells, so it makes a lot of sense. Pretty free to get the forests. Yeah, he has the main deck Rurik Thar. That's the one. Yeah, mostly sideboard cards. No no rush to get the Taiga online. And here is Scavenging Ooze. No second days, so that'll actually resolve. But it's tapped out. It still could be Fork Bolted. Yeah, that one I think is worth a Fork Bolt. Cataxian Probe. See what else is in Karen's hand, and we're going to start making some elementals. It is two Gaius Cradles, a Glimpse of Nature, a Wirewood Symbiote, and the main deck copy of Reclamation Sage. That's not going to find a target in this matchup. This is not an awe-inspiring hand. You can kind of get going. You can glimpse into Symbiote and hope that you find some yeah. stuff, but... A Forked Bolt just on the ooze, which we know is available, is pretty strong here. Yeah, it's kind of like preemptively wastelanding these Gaius Cradles. Yes. Uh, keeping creatures off the battlefield is really important against elves because of Gaia's Cradle. Even if the creatures themselves aren't good on their own, the Cradles allow you to generate so much mana and really yeah. snowball value with things like the Glimpse of Natures. Now, Kieran has been rewarded for fetching those basics. Tannen does have a Wasteland in hand. Not going to get to do much with that. Forked Bolt, away the use another elemental for Tannen. This is a matchup where Tannen's generally going to be exiling his own instants and sorceries if he's using Deathrite Shaman, but uh, any opportunity to make mana with it is going to be right. good. And what about this tempo here? Delver of Secrets, Ponder off Deathrite. It's a third elemental token. Ooh. Picks up, is that the Force of Will Lightning Bolt and a land? See, it has a blue card in hand. That's very strong. Well, his last card's Wasteland, right? Is he down? Yeah. He's down to just one card. Uh, so one or two. A, there is a Wasteland. The Lightning Bolt's good. Guaranteeing a flip with Delver is good. You have two bad cards in the mix, so you have to ask yourself, you know, Does Tannen this win? knows the hand. Does this win? What top decks beat this? Yeah. My thought, Ryan, is that this does win. I said I want to keep like it. It looks like enough. Yeah, a Bolt plus, all, plus his current board should be good. Right. Yeah, you just have to ask yourself, what is the bare minimum I need from this Ponder? And I think a guaranteed flip and one spell that plays should just win him this game. And he hits Kieran down to 16. And I like to keep there. I think a lot of players would be pretty inclined to shuffle that Ponder because it's pretty bad. You know, it's two cards that you don't want, but it is just the bare minimum here. Now we got to find out if Kieran's set up to do Players anything with that Glimpse of Nature. Like Tannen's already really far ahead in the battlefield, so I think you do oh, have to try to shove. It doesn't look pretty. Your starting point is not good, depending on the draw step. I don't know how far we can get with the Glimpse, but just Glimpse, Symbiote, draw a card, see where we can go from there. There's one of those cradles. You mentioned that preemptive stone rain. Yeah, it looks like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two symbiotes are possible from Kieran. They don't 
generate extra mana. There's no way for him to get up to, say, that Reclamation Sage. And even as it stands right now, you see Karen makes one symbiote. He just doesn't have a lot going on. No. And now an Insectile Aberration on Tannin's side. Insects on bugs on both sides of the board. I think we're pretty likely to see Tannin fire this Lightning Bolt off. It's going to be very difficult to Lightning Bolt any elves if that symbiote hangs around. Yeah. Players who registered for Commander number two. Commander number two, please make your way up. Well, he might at the same time, right? If he just swings everything, that's not horrible either. He, he will take the Lightning Bolt, get an Elemental. It's a two-turn clock either way. Yeah. And it's not better in a meaningful way if the Lightning Bolt can go upstairs. So here is a swing three, two, and then three. It's eight. Kieran's at eight. Yeah, Tannen's not just a turn clock. He has damage to spare. Yeah, Death Ride Shaman hanging out for another two. Yeah, it looks like he has 10 this turn, 11 next turn. Wastes away the guy's cradle. Tan's going to do it. I like that wasteland, too, because sure. you stop Kieran from starting to have a turn, using the cradle for some small amount of mana, and then playing a second cradle. Let's go, Glimpse. Heritage Druid draws a card. Now, if he picks up Nettle Sentinel, there's a chance. I don't know that Kieran can get out of this, though. Well, Kieran's only going to be able to make one more mana casting. Yeah, yep. Wirewood Symbiote draws, and that should be the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know that the game was winnable. And in fact, I think that it was not. But I think Kieran had to start this chain last turn. Yeah, well, if you're right. He would need something like Nettle Sentinel Birch Lore Rangers, and because neither of them were in his hand to start with, that's not going to work. You just have to try to draw something with the glimpse. Yeah. Because it's just not going to do it on that turn. Game one, it goes over to Grixis Delver. Tan and Grace taking care of things in that main deck. Forked Bolt, turn one, days on the play. Those things add up. Yeah, winning the die roll, pretty nice there. All right, so they're going to sideboard for game number two. We're going to take a short break, and be, then we will be back. Back here, Tan and Grace and Kieran Conley sideboarding up for a second game. While during the break, Ross Miriam notches another win over there with in the blue mirror over in Modern. Right now, 2-0 for BCW. Just to have the curve out, uh, Serum Visions, Blood Moon, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Wait, wait, wait. There's, we missed a spot. Yeah, it's fine. 
Okay. You see, it's usually a remand, but Nicholas probably didn't cast anything. So he just So both no players remand. agreed to skip two. That's fair. Let's look at the sideboards here. On Kieran Conley's side, three Abrupt Decay, two Cabal Therapy, two Surgical Extraction, two Blood Moon. We're seeing just Blood Moon out of a lot of decks t this weekend. <laughs> Mind, two Mind Break Traps, a Natural Order, a Reclamation Sage. That's the fourth Natural Order. The second Reclamation Sage. The first Progenitus and a <laughs> Null Rod. Yeah. There's, there's a few things you can reach for here. I've certainly seen Elves players just get Delver players with Blood Moon. There's no basics in the deck. It's fairly reasonable to go for that. I like bringing in the Abrupt Decays just because you can have games stolen from you if your opponent has Insectile Aberration. You do kind of become favored the longer the game goes because you set up these big glimpse of nature turns yeah. and the Delver deck is just kind of casting spells. And then don't really daze doesn't do too much there. Right. This rest of the stuff I, I don't think you need. A, a very easy way for the Elves player to lose the matchup is to draw Progenitus. I, I, I don't, I, uh, yeah, that, I've seen that one. Yeah, I, I just don't think you want to go that route here. On Tannen's side, he has three Cabal Therapies, two Pyroblasts, two Surgical Extractions of his own, and a Braid, an Ancient Grudge, a Dead and Gone, a Diabolic Edict, a Dismember, so a lot of removal spells here, a Fluster Storm, a Marsh Casualties, and a Pithing Needle. So you want to get heavier on removal. So it's a kind of inefficient, but the, a Braid probably has to come in. The Dead Gone's very good, deals with everything, just the shock on the front side there. The Dismember is quite good. You don't love the life loss. It's tough to Edict the thing that you want. I don't yeah. love Diabolic Edict, but I do want to get off of these Dazes when I'm on the draw. Interesting. So even now, like, Daze was really great for him that game, but you, you're, it's just got that small of a window. Yeah, yeah Tannen, he won the die roll. He had the turn one Deathrite Shaman, so he could still have two mana on turn two with that Daze, and that was very important. That was just kind of the perfect storm of Daze mattering in the matchup. Yeah. Especially post-sideboard, where the Elves player probably has answers to your aberration, Daze gets a lot worse. You know, they're heavy on basic forest. They can pull ahead of your wastelands fairly easily. And Cabal Therapy, I actually think, is pretty reasonable in the matchup. It helps you break up those glimpse turns when they're setting up. Just get the glimpses out of the hands. So you don't even have to fight over them on that turn. If you probe them and see a natural order, if you don't have the counter spell, you, you got to deal with that one. Marsh Casualty is the other card in his sideboard. I have to assume you want that against an Elves deck. Yeah, it's... It can be a lot more awkward than you might think at first glance. It looks yeah, like... Yeah, it looks great. Oh, minus one, minus one. They have all these mopey creatures. Well, they have Deathrite Shaman. They have Nettle Sentinel. They can yeah. pick things up with their Wirewood Symbiotes. But it's good enough to play. It's probably not Lights Out. This is uh, less so the matchup you wanted for than Mirrors or matchups where there's a lot of true name Nemesis. But it certainly matters. Full game one sweep complete. Brennan to Candio. You just see they're taking the first game in standard. So PCW looking to get out to that early lead. We mentioned just five teams with this eight and one record to start the day. Yeah. The, I would think by the end of round 12, we'll just have one team at one loss. The team that can start 3 0 of those five teams should just be good for top eight. Got to feel good about that. Yeah. Remember, this team raced Mir Miriam and Decandio lost round one yesterday. Yeah. They have been on a hot streak. Turn one, Wirewood Symbiote for Kieran as we start off game number two here on the Legacy table. Let's take over at Tan's hand. A red card up to the front of it. That's young Pyromancer. Looks like a lightning bolt available as well. I like both of those. If you don't have a Delver, I think it's worth playing Delver over Lightning Bolt if you have that on turn one. Okay. Because the sim bolting the Symbiote doesn't matter. The Symbiote doesn't tap for mana. You're going to have to bolt it inevitably. It's going to pick something up. Getting it off the table matters insofar as Kieran can follow up with an Elvish Visionary. Then you've given away a card. You're going to bolt it inevitably. you got to get on the battlefield with some pressure. Looks like the only threat might be that young Pyromancer. Makes sense just to get in front of the Elvish Visionary. And we'll see if Kieran does have the best card in the deck. Elvish Visionary? Oh, yeah. Every matchup, best card. By far. Well, not every matchup. Not really <laughs> the, uh, the combo pieces the Crater of Behemoth set up matters a lot more Instant. against the faster decks. And any, there any, is. any fair deck, though, Visionary is so important. 
Ooh, it resolves. I was checking for days there. Santa says, no, you go for it, man. Tanner draws another young Pyromancer. Here's one, and he'll get Taxian Probe. Sees. Ooh, this is dangerous. Abrupt Decay, two Wirewood Symbiotes, and a Natural Order. I like a lot of what's going on here. Sand is scary. Backup Symbiotes means Kieran's able to pick up that Visionary and just draw extra cards. Yeah, and we can, we, we can see Symbiote. We can also just see Abrupt Decay shooting off at the Pyromancer here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a land there, so you can see both of those on the following turn. I like the way that Kieran draws cards as if there were miracles in the deck. <laughs> Did we hit the green miracle? Yeah. Uh, Revenge of the Hunted. <laughs> Attack. You're, all your guys have to block the Elvish Visionary. Getcha. I mean, that would be very good. <laughs> um, blessings of Nature. That would just be a big Elvish Visionary. That's not good enough. Abrupt Decay will shoot down the Pyromancer. I'm not going to see an attack, though. I don't think Kieran wants to trade that Visionary off with a Elemental token, but he can make Wirewood Symbiote to pair. So this is a minor thing. I believe that Kieran drew Gaia's Cradle for turn. Okay. Kieran chooses to fetch for Taiga here to cast a Symbiote. The Cradle could also do that, and then the fetch land could be used to find Dryad Arbor. Okay. So over a couple turns... Potentially, you're giving up mana. Cradle plus Dryad Arbor kind of gets you more online. That is true. You don't really want to expose the Cradle to Wasteland, which is something. Yeah, and maybe that's the calculation here. Tan will try to rebuild. We know he has another young Pyromancer. Can make that here, but Kieran's setup is getting pretty threatening. Has this symbiote visionary three lands already and 18 life still to work with. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like much, but Tannen is very far behind. Yeah, young Pyromancer for Tannen. Another Gataxian Probe. And now Tannen <laughs> sees the Cradle, the second symbiote that he knew about, and the Natural Order that he already knew about. Question is, what can Tannen do? Left up red mana here. Don't know if Cabal Therapy is in the deck right now. Well, Tannen can draw this Force of Will to try to keep Natural order and check, and he'll cast Forked Bolt. Karen, in response, will put the Visionary back in his hand. Right. And a swing for one, though. Tannen's. What he's doing here is actually pretty reasonable. Young Pyromancer has picked up an army. Yeah. Forked Bolt, frequently a two for one, but it's much worse than that in that battlefield. But you do have to deal with the symbiote. Kieran does have he the draws, backup, no. though. Is that. Did he draw Progenitus? I think he drew Progenitus. Hooray. What a card. <laughs> Yeah. That one's not going to be hard. Are you going to natural order for that? that it's going to be tough stinks. now. It's going to be pretty tough now. Ross Miriam knows all about that one. <laughs> I have a handful of stories where I'm playing against elves. And in game yeah. three, the mulligan, they both mulligan to five and just drop Regenitus. <laughs> so, okay. you, you can ask Jarvis you about that Did one. Did he cast it off Virtual Rangers? No, no, no. Jarvis lost. That's ah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Karen makes Symbiote plus Elvish Visionary, then Guy's Cradle taps for two to make Scavenging Ooze. There aren't even Virtual Rangers in Kieran's deck. He, that, can't, he can't cast Progenitus. That makes it tough. Just, why would you register a card you can't cast? <laughs> Cabal Therapy from Tannen. All right. Ooh, yeah, that is nice. I'm going to tear apart the hand. <laughs> natural I order. I don't think we're going to flash that back. Yeah, hit the take natural it, order. Take it. You are welcome to keep that progenitus. Do it. He, <laughs> Tannen's like, excuse me? What is... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like, like, yes, yes. I was, make me shuffle it back into hmm. my library. Progenitus. White, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, hey, green. Hey, I got the green card. Okay, I see one black, one red. <laughs> okay, you got the green, you got the green. All right, we're a little ways off of this one. <coughs> Follow-up brainstorm here for Tannen. Making a lot of elemental tokens. The scavenging you is pretty significant for Kieran, though. Tannen is going to need to deal with that one. 
Though if you cast enough cantrips and make enough elemental tokens, you can punch through whatever. Ideally, though, Tannen just has another removal spell that targets the use here. Tannen has paid life for those probes, but uh, he still had a pretty healthy life total. No real concern of Kieran turning the corner anytime soon here. Ponder from Tannen. Big, big army. But when you look Ooh. at it's not about board presence exactly. You're, you're really looking at how fast, like, closing speed. So probably two turns from Tannen as we see Lightning Bolt on the Scavenging Ooze. That Lightning Bolt was a huge pickup. <laughs> not only another elemental token, but just getting the only relevant blocker off the battlefield. And Kieran can start to generate some card advantage using the Symbiote plus the Visionary to block one of these, pick up the Visionary, redraw on the following turn. But there's a lot going on beyond that. Kieran actually yeah. has to find a way to win the game. Is there a point at which a Crater of Behemoth isn't good enough? because Tannen has too many elementals. The issue isn't so much that Tannen has too many elementals, it's that Kieran has not enough elves. Okay. Well, he's going to try to rebuild. Here's Elvish Visionary, the one he picked up off Symbiote. Draws Glimpse of Nature at some point here. That could be interesting. We'll see two green mana. Kieran will pick up Visionary and recast. Draws another card. Good sequencing there. Floating the mana with the Cradle, then picking up the Visionary. And says go, nothing else. And the Glimpse of Nature was picked up, so Kieran could have a very explosive turn on the following turn. Yeah, next turn could be big. He could Ooh. He could Glimpse draw the deck. I believe Tannen has Force of Will and now five mana, though. Okay. Block bounce. Kieran takes seven, goes to eight. Yeah, Force plus five mana. That'll work. Kieran's picked up a number of extra cards, though. Question is, can one Force of Will do it? The Progenitus, obviously a dead draw, but five additional cards, one of them being the Elvish Visionary, available to Kieran. Gaia's Cradle already on the battlefield. Potential to generate a ton of mana this turn. Here's Glimpse, and we'll see if this Katana will fire off the Force of Will at this. I think absolutely you should. It's going to confer with the teammates here. Ross Miriam, no stranger to Elves, so a great resource to ask there. And Ross definitely agrees, Force of Will that. Tannen will. You know, theoretically, this turn can progress in a way. Maybe a natural order has been drawn that can be really bad. But the thing about it is the glimpse of nature is already just a problem. You just don't want to give Kieran access to those cards. You already know there's at least one creature, one cradle. Things can get really bad really fast if a glimpse of nature resolves. Oh, Janae again from Kieran. Green Sun's Zenith for one. Kieran's down to eight, though. He's got to be pretty concerned about this. As the way he's playing this turn is has taken away the ability to combo on this turn. I mean, he started the way that he needs to on a combo turn. He tried the glimpse. It just didn't resolve. Yeah. Deathrite Shaman is going to be the card he Zeniths for. That's a one-two. It blocks one-ones very I mean, well. Sure. I'm into that on this board. <laughs> Also a way to gain some life, some creatures in the graveyard. Tanish playing off the top here. He has eight elementals and a young pyromancer. He will swing them all. Yeah. A Two, lot of times you'll yeah. hang back with the pyromancer, but he's made so many elementals <laughs> that it's just correct to shove. It's just another creature now. Right. This is likely a two-turn clock no matter how you slice it. So Kieran will block and bounce visionary. Deathrite Shaman will take care of an elemental. He'll take seven, go to one. Tana will wasteland away the cradle. That's, That's big. Good draw. Here's pressure. Kieran needs to win this turn. Mm -hmm. The odds that he can survive through this turn are pretty low. Starting with two creatures, one of them being a Deathrite Shaman, does mean he has a good amount of mana to start. Yep. Whereas in game one, didn't really have the setup to go off just with one cradle. From this position, theoretically, he could. Some bad news, I do spot a Blood Moon in the hand that'll go with the Progenitus as dead cards. Yeah. Deathrite will make mana. One green floating. 
Yeah, Elvish Symb Visionary, spending the green. Symbiote Death Right means he has even <laughs> a little bit more mana. Draws Dryad Arbor. That one's no good. A ten and Curly, eight creatures on the battlefield. You need to get yeah. at least eight blockers to get through that. Kieran at one. Two more mana. Recast Visionary. Only one left for Kieran, but he has not made a land drop. Natural Order. And he can't do it. There's the handshake. Ten and Grace takes game two. He wins the match. And two games to zero over Kieran Conley. Yeah, kind of amusing thing there. You see uh, Kieran losing, and part of the problem is he drew too many sideboard cards. The Blood yeah. Moon and the Progenitus, they just didn't play. Yeah, and you know, there was a couple turns at the end there where Tannen did not have much of a hand, and Kieran did, but his hand wasn't able to convert into a win. Yep. So, first four games go toward BCW. Just needs one more from Ross Miriam or Brennan DeCandio to finish the sweep. And it looks like it's not going to be a sweep. Game number two in Modern just finishes, and that one goes for Ben Nikolic. Yeah, and Miriam certainly likes the matchup, but uh, Nikolic is, I don't think anybody should be happy to play against him. <laughs> All right, so players are going to shuffle up for a third game. We'll be back with that in just a minute. Back here with the Team BCW looking for that fifth win to lock up the round. We're looking over at Standard, actually. It looks like Brennan DeCandy on blue-black control might just have that win. Gear hooks on both sides. One's more relevant, though, is Luke Purcell at five life. So you got to think, okay, that gear hook needs to be answered. Right now, he's holding it off with a Whirler Virtuoso. Also just holding it off with his own gear hook. The five sixes just kind of bounce. Purcell makes a couple thopters. They're going to jam in. Gets Brand down to 22. He's got a ways to go. But here's another Whirler Virtuoso, and why not? Brandon just has one card in hand. It's going to be hard to punch through damage with this Gear Hulk, Ryan. Yeah. Going to need to draw something pretty significant. More Gear Hulks. Check to see if Brennan has access to an Argul's Bloodfast. There is one in the sideboard. Drawing the Bloodfast would be huge. Another Thopter by Luke Purcell. Both players just with lands in hand. Yeah, right now both players are taking up lands. If that continues to happen, that's great for Luke. Brennan, so far it is Brennan picking up Field of Ruin. <laughs> Another land for Purcell. Just holding on to three. Dragon Skull Summit. And he gums up the ground with two Virtuosos and a Gear Hulk as these three Thopters continue to chip in. And he'll go ahead and use the Field of Ruin. Yeah. Proactively using this. And there's no, there's no pseudo burn spell on Brennan's side, right? Something that can just shoot those last five across? No, really not up to anything like that. This matchup's really just a slog. What are his big draws? I, I suppose a Scarab God? I think right now, before he takes too many hits from these Thopters, Argua's Bloodfast would win the game. Sure, sure, we're just drawing enough things. It's a ton of redraws. <laughs> I think Confiscation Coup is the pickup. Brennan does have two energy. Yeah. All right, well, this one, looking like Luke Brazell may be able to even things up. We're going to go back over to that modern match with Ross Miriam and Ben Nicklich as they start game number three. Ross having lost game two. He's going to try to pick this one up for the team. Speaking of just making land drops, get ready for some of that. <laughs> yeah, Ross going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, Ross can go for a turn three Blood Moon. Came in at the perfect moment. Ben Nicholas is fetching some basics. Is he going to remand or is he just fetching some basics? Smells like a logic knot. Ooh, that's rude. Not as rude as a Blood Moon. <laughs> that Gideon in your hand, man. I don't know about that, that one. That one's tough through a Blood Moon. Snapcaster Mage. No, Blood Moon's going to resolve. Gross. And Nikolic has one planes in the 75. Picks up Lightning Helix. That one's going to be hard to cast. Mm -hmm. Let's both just play blue-red. Snapcaster Mage hits in for two. And the thing about Snapcaster Mage and the Blood Moon matchups 
is it becomes really hard to flashback the spell that you actually want to flashback. <laughs> so it does not look great that Nicholas <laughs> just cast this 2-1. Yeah. You can flashback lightning bolts all day. <laughs> you can do that. But the, the play just makes sense. It, it, it's not good, but it makes sense. Serum Visions for Ross puts some cards on the bottom. He does have a Jace the Mind Sculptor he's trying to clear the way for. Ooh, a third island for yeah, Nicholas. Yeah, both this, players on three islands. This is Cryptic Command mana. He swings in with Snapcaster Mage. You got some awkward ones, though. Both Lightning Helix and Gideon Ally of Zendikar in the hand for Nikolic. Yeah. Neither of those do much. Somewhat surprised to see Lightning Helix post-board. Possible he's putting on Mir putting Miriam on young Pyromancers. Okay. The Ross is just playing Snapcaster, Mendelian, Pian, Kieran. Yeah, really, he's just playing a bunch of basic islands. <laughs> yeah. Lightning bolts down a Snapcaster. Ben Nicholas went for a second one. And Ross passes. He'd like to get the Jace to work here. So we see another Snapcaster from Ben Nicholas. Miriam playing two copies of Electrolyze. Would have been great to have that here. Yeah, and this game is just about really beat down of two ones. Ross goes to 11. No one else has castable cards. <laughs> Ross picks up a Snapcaster of his own. No, okay. he has plenty of Serum Ross's Visions. Ross's Snapcaster is actually good <laughs> There's because a he has a Lightning Bolt, and that'll just trade with both of Nikolic's Snapcasters. Yeah, make, and if he can make that trade, and then if that works, can land Jace. And if all things go according to plan, it's great for Ross. He'll flash Snapcaster Mage into play on this attack. Targeting Lightning Bolt. Blocks one mage, bolts another one. And yeah, that game we saw there, Luke Purcell did win over in standard to force game three. But we'll see if that matters. Ross Miriam going to have an empty board. Jace is his play. I have to think I like that one. Yeah, Jace on an empty board tends to win the game. And here is the Mind Sculptor. And disdainful stroke by Nicolich and Spell Snare back from Ross. Spell Snare is so good. Danger here. If this resolves, Nikolic is in a lot of trouble. This counter spells trade. Probably the Planeswalkers in play. Yeah. And spend Ross, one turn yep. plusing, and then it's going to be all brainstorms from here. Ross scries with it, puts Jace to five. And there's the last Snapcaster Mage from Nikolic. Once again, flashing back nothing. All four. All four cast without target. Nikolic's best draw is basic planes, so we can attack Jace, Helix Jace. Ryan, you like the 2 1 1 split on foil snapcasters? I just kind of hate everything about that. <laughs> it allowed him yesterday to just do it the enabled, ultimate disrespect. It enabled some pretty good bad manners, which I am a fan of. I liked, I liked that. that if was he fun missed to watch. it yesterday, Nicholas was ahead by far enough that he, de that he decided just to press his advantage on his opponent by playing a different snapcaster than his opponent had seen. To show, just to show how hopeless the situation was. It was, it was pretty great. And now Jace will start brainstorming. And look at this. Electrolyze, Snapcaster Mage, Snapcaster Mage. That's pretty unbeatable, Ross says go. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I'm generally just a fan of those Innistrad Snapcaster Mages. Well, I like the soccer player one. I like uh, original the art, RPG in, in particular, invitational style cards. I, like I like using the one that's actually the likeness of the person. I believe Chris Pakula has something to say about this. Yeah, he's a big fan of the shards of Alara meddling mage. Yeah. Or Alara reborn, rather. That's true. I might have to buy a set to see if I can get Chris to sign them this weekend. He doesn't sign those ones. Another that's, that's brainstorm pretty rude of him. by Ross. It's not him. Why is he signing that? <laughs> <laughs> that's just not. That's not him. Seems like we're on different levels with this joke. <laughs> oh, you'll have to explain it. Yeah, it's very, it's very complicated. Okay. Snapcaster made from Ben Nikolic. Just as a 2 1. And Ro uh, this, is, this is telling Ross just has a spell snare in hand. And an electrolyze <laughs> if Snapcaster okay, in, you know, in hand. Snapcaster snare, that makes sense. You know, you just want to start actually apply applying yeah. some pressure. Negate. That's probably. Uh, he might have to spend his electrolyze, Ryan. <laughs> Rats. 
<laughs> well, he'll just first he'll, first he'll block. You know. So Nicolich's Snapcaster ends up resolving, targets them the gate, and Ross has no other action because the Snapcaster Mage that Ross just casts just checks, checks Nicolich's it. Snapcaster Mage. Miriam just unreasonably far ahead in this game. And Ross will opt. He's trying to go ahead and walk this one in for the teammate. We already saw Tan and Grace, a 2-0 winner on the Legacy table. One Bree talked about this, Ryan. I said Tannen was the one who was going to have trouble winning and needed the carry from his teammates. That, not how it's playing out. Tannen now actually personally in matches this weekend is 10 to 0. Dude's on a mission. Operation Get Tannen a Trophy lives on. Ross's mission here is just a stack of basic islands. Does he have a Vidalcan Shackles? He has a Kyranos, I'll tell you that. That okay. one's been in his hand for a minute. You know, great things happen when you just have a Jace the Mind Sculptor in play for a while. Ben wants to have a Jace too, but Ross is not about that. He'll remand. And with two Snapcasters now, it electrolyze. We'll see if we get Karanos online. Yeah, it, one and one. It won't be difficult for Ross to punch that Jace. And Ben Nikolic extends the hand. So Ross Miriam 2 1. He's your winner in modern. And. The team of Tan and Grace, Ross Miriam, and Brennan DeCandio will pick up the round. They improve to 9-1, and one, holding in that first place tie. I think this is my favorite configuration of decks. Because a blue-red deck, a blue-black deck, and a Grixis deck. They're all deck. Grixis.